لك مقصودي ومعتمدي This is some hadith and this just shows that this is categorical this is not this is not about man trying to dominate women and this is not about like um, competing between husband and wife and so on this is order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said any woman who dies leaving her husband content with her will enter paradise any woman who dies and her husband is happy with how she's been to him as a wife that's that's a guarantee of paradise that's a guarantee of part of paradise as long as she's taking care of her husband she's lived in a good manner with her husband with all the problems that go on in marriage but essentially he's happy he's happy with her the way that she's been all those 10 15 20 years and when she dies uh, he's happy with her that's a guarantee that's a guarantee that she goes into into gender just as we know <coughs> that the pleasure of allah is in the pleasure of your parents if, if your parents are happy with you allah is happy with you but for the wife if the husband is happy with her allah is happy with her because that's where allah has placed the authority that's the words of the messenger sallam, a woman who dies leaving a husband content with her will enter paradise that's a hadith in a tirmidhi second hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if a woman performs the five prayers fast ramadan does not commit adultery and obeys her husband she will told she will she will be told enter paradise by any door you wish enter paradise by any door you wish if you look at the hadith it's just saying that she needs to do her obligation and that's it as long as she's not a woman who fasts a lot she's not a woman who's a lot of dhikr she's not a woman who's a lot of ibadah but she ensures that her husband's happy with her and she has a special rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she obeys her husband as long as he obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she's been given a guarantee of the highest maqam the highest rank on the day in any of the doors of paradise she can enter paradise and when you see such a level of reward it tells the woman that there is difficulty involved in what's, what's being asked that's recognizing that anybody to have to constantly obey another person it's difficult it's difficult so there's no doubt that there's difficulty in her having to obey her husband all the time but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving her the greatest of reward if she if she does so another hadith A woman came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is Lord of men and women Allah has written jihad for men and he's required men to fight then if they are triumphant they are rewarded and if they are martyred they are alive with their Lord who provides for them what is equivalent to their deeds of obedience and what does a woman get what does a woman they they go out and fight if they're killed they have the greatest of reward the shaheed the martyr has a, has a unique rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the women are not required to go and fight so what do they get that's equivalent the prophet sallallahu said obeying your husbands knowing their rights and knowing their rights a few of you women will do this I, the equivalent for a woman is to obey the husband and know the rights that the husband has and she will get the same as what the martyr on the battlefield will receive. She will get the same rank with Allah subhanahu as what the martyr, the shaheed in battle. Like that woman there who's at home taking care of her husband, looking after her house and so on, raising children in the best of manner. And she's lived a life like, like that. She's equivalent in rank to the shaheed in battle. She gets the same rank as the martyr in, in battle. So her rank should not be considered low. Like that woman who, who maintains her house and takes care of her husband and children that's not a low rank with Allah that's a unique rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when a woman like doesn't like that and she prefers like to do other things she prefers to go and study and she prefers to go and work and so on she's making it missing out on a special maqam with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she's missing out on a guaranteed path to paradise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it's difficult as the Prophet said but few of you women will do this a few of you women will do this just a note on this hadith I've heard, I've heard, I've heard some women saying that the Sahabiyat, the women around the Prophet didn't used to speak that much and they were 
kind of overly submissive and so on. Far from the truth about the women around the Prophet. And when they read the Quran and see instruction coming down about you know, where's our portion? Where's our portion? They all come and ask the Prophet, like, like one Um Salama, Radhimanha. She came to the Prophet and said, like, Hijra is all about the men in the Quran, where's our portion? And a verse was revealed down in response, the last, I think verse 196 in Surah Ali Imran, was revealed because, revealed because she said, the Hijra is only speaking about the men, where's, where's the women? And then another, another companion, female companion said, all of it's about the men, where's the women? Surah Al Ahzab, I think it's verse 33, came down in response to that, saying the women are getting the same reward as the men, men will receive. So the idea that the women around the cross were not were not like central to this is completely false. It's completely completely wrong. Here, a Sahabi is in a sense demanding, and where's our reward? We don't we don't go out and fight. Where's our reward? The Prophet told her, it's in it's in being with her husband. Another hadith: a woman came to the Prophet for something. The Prophet is going to discuss something else, but she came, she had a personal issue that she needed to speak to the Prophet about. After the Prophet dealt with that issue, he then says to her, Are you married? She says, Yes. The Prophet then asked her, How do you treat your husband? She replied, I do all that is in my capacity. I do all that in my capacity. He said, Look at your relationship with him. He is your paradise, he is your help. Look at your relationship with him. He is your paradise. He is your hellfire. Right? If a woman is sabira, if a woman is patient with everything that her husband does, but she tolerates it, she's patient, and she overlooks the fault of her husband, and she'll keep on toiling just to take care of, of her husband and her children and so on, even though she doesn't like it, um, and even though others around her consider to be menial, the type of what she's doing and so on, if she maintains patience through that, and that's her paradise. But if she rebels and she speaks out of turn and she's, and she's disrespectful of her husband and she does not fulfill any of her duties and responsibilities, he's your help. Right? To the point where I, he's not happy with her. He's not happy with the way that she is. That becomes her help. Right? The Prophet said an important statement for wives, look at your relationship with him, with your husband. He is your paradise. He is your help. Right? And how you are towards him determines how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be towards you. How you as a wife are towards your husband determines how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be towards you.